Um, I'd like to call to order the meeting of the uh, Rare Sparks Convention and Visitors Authority uh, Board of Directors uh, Board Retreat and Special Meeting uh, for Thursday, November 9th uh, with a Pledge of Allegiance. Let's go ahead and start with the pledge. Mr. Merlin, could you lead us in the pledge? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. One nation, your God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Madam Clerk, I get a word call. Mr. Alzar? Here. Mr. Swaga? Here. Chair Bybee? Here. Mr. Chapman? Mr. East? Here. Commissioner Hill? Here. Mr. Jay? Mr. Murdoch? Here. Mayor Sheevy? You have a point? Thank you very so much, Madam Clerk. Uh, item B, comments from the floor by the public. No public comment at this time. Okay, no public in the room, so I'll go ahead and close that. Uh, we'll move on to uh, consent agenda. Um, we have four items on the consent agenda today. Uh, our normal approval of the agenda in minutes, which is what we normally have, and we have two other items. So, um, with the consent agenda, if anyone has questions on C3 or 4 and you want to remove that, we do have staff on the phone if you've got great questions on either one. So I'm open to a motion uh, either accepting the whole consent agenda or if you want to remove uh, either or both of those items, looking for a motion. I don't know so much why we need to remove it, but can staff just speak to it to Walk it on the employee benefit plan. You yeah. can still, you can still approve it. So. so let's pull it out. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Yeah. And we, that we don't have any specific question other than okay. getting it yesterday and kind of looking at it. Sure. Be helpful just to walk through. Yeah. So do you want to? Uh, I'll make a motion to approve with the uh, polling C3. C3. And does is everyone good with C4 or do you want to? Judge, uh, remove C3. Is that the motion? That's, That's your motion. I have a second here. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried unanimously. Okay, so we will go back to C3 and we have um, Courtney on who can answer. Or, Courtney, I think what Mr. Squag is looking for is maybe a brief um, over, overview of this item so that we feel comfortable with, uh, with what, what we are going to do. Yeah, absolutely. Good morning. Courtney Jager, Vice President of Finance. So purpose of agenda item C3 is to bring forward the renewal of our employee benefit plans for calendar year 2024. We bring this to the board annually. This is the first year in several years that we've actually seen a decrease in premiums year over year. And this is directly related to our improved claims experience, which is attributable to the growth in the employee base from the facilities transition. As you'll remember, in previous years, we had um, a, a pretty tough ratio to deal with due to the higher retiree population. But now that we've brought on more active employees, our claims experience has improved and we are able to market to more carriers, get more interest in, in, in effectively lower premiums. Um, if the board would like to see a more full presentation of our marketing efforts, we do have Kevin Monaghan from LP Insurance here. He can kind of go over our efforts to bid the premiums, the plans, and what the results were. I mean, if you can get the high level, I don't need a lot of detail, but just obviously we've had bids and kind of how you fleshed it out, Kevin. Yeah, yeah, my pleasure. So Kevin Monahan, as Courtney mentioned, LP Insurance Services. And um, what I'll do as well, hopefully this connectivity is, is in place, but I, I think it might be helpful just to touch on the marketing analysis, um, give some explanation and some color to this. If I'm going too deep into any of this, please let me know. If I'm, if I'm going too fast, let me know. I'll try to try to hit the happy medium here. Um, there, this page is worth discussing, particularly on the medical side. These are all of the group health insurance carriers in the state of Nevada. United Healthcare, Anthem, Prominence, Hometown, Aetna, Cigna, Sierra Health and Life, Health Plan of Nevada. They were all visited and they were all solicited as part of the process. 
And, and fortunately, to Courtney's point, there was a lot of interest this year, and um, particularly from Anthem, Hometown Health, Prominence, and Aetna. So, and, and that was different than what we've seen in years past, again, to Courtney's point, with respect to the claims experience. So this was the first year in a while we had some really active interest. Um, Anthem emerged, I would say, as the front runner primarily uh, based on the, the value proposition, the network, the technology, the services, and of course the cost. They happen to be on the medical side, the lowest price um, quote or better throughout the process. And, and their model, their service model aligned very closely also with um, that of United Healthcare, which should mean to the smaller disruption for the employees or less disruption. Uh, the other one that we we did include in the uh, materials that were submitted was prominence. And the reason that is, is prominence, um, although they weren't as aggressive from a pricing standpoint, they did offer a little bit of a, a second year renewal rate cap. So that was discussed as well um, with management. We kicked the tires on that. Is it worth foregoing? ultimately what ended up a 12% reduction in premium, $200,000 to, to secure that second year cap. I mean, health insurance is volatile, right? We all know that. So there is some value in those types of caps. And um, But I think ultimately the, the bird in the hand made more sense on this one, the 12% the reduction, $200,000 a year. So this ended up being the recommendation that's included in the narrative portion of the packet. If you're looking here on the screen, the, the recommendation ultimately equating to the $200,000 in annual year over year savings. The plan design is in line with that of United. In fact, it matches identically. The deductible is increasing slightly from 3,000 to 3,200. This is the result of an IRS mandated change for high deductible health plans, HSA plans. So that's happening across the board, across the industry, every employer space right now. And that does, and that's happened before, by the way, when the IRS raises those limits. Um, Anthem has another plan that I think was attractive to, to management when we spent some time discussing, it's called Smart Shopper. This is included at no cost with the RCVA plan, but what Smart Shopper is going to do is actually incentivize RSCVA employees, RSCVA family members to obtain care from lower price, lower priced providers. So employees have the choice; they can get their lab work at any number of hospitals throughout their networks, um, or they can get their lab work at LabCorp. Right and and LabCorp is a fraction of the price of the hospital lab. So Anthem's introduced this program to where employees who choose they can still go to the hospitals to get these services. But if somebody chooses to go to a location like a LabCorp, then they will actually receive a check in the mail to reward them for that. So and that should help too. We would hope over the long term with our CBA's loss ratio continuing to put focus on that and chip away at that and hopefully maintain current levels or, or something relatively similar. Um, any questions on the medical aspect before I move on or? Kevin, I do have one and then I'll go to what? Mr. East. Yeah. Um, on, on the medical, does it change uh, the network of providers? Do we have employees who have their doctors that won't be able to go to those doctors because they would not be in network? How does that, does it impact? Yeah, good question. So, so no two networks are identical. So the short answer to your question is yes, it will change. You'll be going from the United Healthcare Network to the Anthem Blue Cross and Blue Shield Network. Fortunately, the disruption should be very, very, very small. Just like United Healthcare, um, Anthem maintains a very broad and robust network, not only across the state of Nevada not only in our local community, but also nationally. So the disruption should be minimal. Renown, St. Mary's, Northern Nevada, 
the associated health systems, physician groups, urgent cares, those will continue to, to be present in the Anthem network, um, along with a lot of the independent, smaller um, provider offices throughout the community. And it will retain, like I mentioned earlier, to the, the national access component. And that was a factor for us in making this decision, too, because several of the other providers that bid did have smaller networks and would have resulted in a decrease of available providers to employees. Mr. East? So, so I know the, the total premium, <clears throat> excuse me, the total premium cost here. Is there a, uh, an employer employee percentage that's applied there? Like, is it is it an 80 20 thing where the employee pays 20 percent and our CBA pays the remainder? What, what's that number? Um, I don't I don't have that specific number. I don't know if you do Courtney either. I know um, I could shed some light on it. The um, overwhelming majority is paid by our CBA. Our CBA is paying 100% of the employee costs. They're paying um, a large chunk of dependent costs, family costs. Um, and for a lot of the retirees who remain on the plan too. So don't have a specific number. I'm sure Courtney could, could get that. It might take some time, but but if it may answer the question regardless to know that the overwhelming majority is paid by our CBA. About stop loss, do we have a stop loss for uh, catastrophic, um, it, it, you know, 200,000 200, per claimant or 250,000 per claimant just to minimize our risk on the top end? Yeah, so... Um, under within your so your policy is fully insured so technically no because the insurance company is taking all the risk in this okay. this environment. But good question and and there is there is um, within the fully insured structure some what they call pooling, which will forgive some of your really extreme catastrophic claims uh, when you have those from your renewal calculation. Courtney, did you have anything to add to that? Because I'm curious too, do we pay 100% after uh, deductible? Um, so like Kevin was mentioning, um, this is a fully insured plan. So the employee would be responsible for meeting their deductible carriers covering the cost outside of an annual maximum deductible. So there's not a risk to us of paying outside of our premiums for this selection. And the employee only has to play to pay a deductible. Right, so there's no monthly premium. That was my question. Okay. Was around. Oh, yeah, premium. absolutely. The month the employees do pay monthly premium. So the RSCBA covers 100% of employee costs. So if you're an employee that you're insured solely for yourself, the RSCBA pays that premium for you. Um, if you have family and spouse coverage, we pay 50% of that premium. That's really good insurance. Yeah. <laughs> if you've ever looked at other places and especially private, that's really, really good. I, I had no idea we were. Thank you, Madam Chair. Your question made me think about um, how the county does this. Uh, Courtney, we typically put an employee group together to review uh, each one of the plans. Uh, do we do that at the RFP? Absolutely. So we work closely with our broker. Um, the HR department oversees the review of the bids and the plans um, that are available to us. And then we review those directly with the CEO to make those decisions. Right. But you don't have like an employee working group on it. We don't have a, a group of employees. That's not how the RCBA's process has been structured in the past. Mm -hmm. Essentially, because this has been very budget driven too, because in previous years, we've seen very large increases from 10 to 20%. So our options are very limited. This year, we we were, felt that the options that were presented to us wouldn't really have warranted an employee group because we would be looking at either large cost increases or significant decreases to the employee network. So there really wasn't much to debate in those areas. Any other questions? And uh, thank you. That's like really good news because knowing from the city perspective what we're looking at, and and like you said, the trend has been 14 to 20 percent increases in insurance. So the fact that we get this many bids and um, our claims led to that, and the number of employees is really good news. Um, and I appreciate uh, the work both of you have done. So without any other questions, do I have a motion to approve item C three? So moved. A motion by okay. Mr. Squawka. Do I have a second? Second. Second by. Okay. <laughs> I wasn't looking or there, wasn't sure. By Mr. Murdoch. Uh, motion is second. Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 aye.
opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Okay. Um, so we are moving right into item D, which is our board retreat strategic plan workshop presentations. And I am going to turn it over to our dynamic trainer extraordinaire, Dr. Andrew Taylor, who is going to uh, uh, take us on a fun journey this morning uh, that I think. Oh, yeah, fun journey. I, like it. I know. It's, yeah, it's great. It's, well, I kind of made it a flight. Oh, and it in the <laughs> so, yeah, ready for takeoff. We're going to be on a really nice trip right now with Angie. Um, set my, set my, my Mac up. So, yeah, they're ready. Okay. Job a bit. okay. Um, I guess for uh let's see Mike and Trent, um we're good right now. So we don't have any other questions. Uh thank you yeah. for being here this morning. And we'll move on to the training session. Whatever these